Thank you for joining us. I'm Naiba Reynoso. This week, county workers lend a helping hand to those experiencing homelessness. And We Rise kicks off, bringing a conversation about the importance of mental well being to the center stage. But first, our close up report. School shootings are a national epidemic, but that doesn't mean that they are inevitable. The START program aims to stop school violence before it happens. 911, what's your emergency? From Columbine to Parkland, school shootings have made campus safety concerns an everyday reality. I remember thinking like, oh, well, if it were to happen here, like, what would I do, where would I go? In the wake of such highly publicized incidents nationwide on school campuses, Los Angeles County has put together a team to start preventing them locally. We're the START team, which, which stands for School Threat Assessment Response Team. START was formed in 2009 after the Virginia Tech shooting, and 8,000 calls later, it's become a national model for school safety and violence prevention. The team is made up of mental health clinicians who work with local law enforcement to keep our campuses safe and supported all over Los Angeles County. I saw the school actually taking action on that, putting uh, locks on doors and uh, doing some shooting, shooting drills. And that's helped a lot. On top of holding workshops and drills, the START team is responsible for early identification, intervention, case management, and monitoring of potential threats. Now, those efforts are expanding thanks to increased funding and the addition of 27 new positions to join people like Deputy Javante Brown of the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department and Dr. Nicholas Belise on the front lines of school safety. Our teams don't just consist of law enforcement and clinicians, sometimes we do uh, law enforcement only teams, sometimes we have clinician only teams, and sometimes we have a clinician paired with a law enforcement official. Uh, it just depends on the case. Like this troubling situation the START team handled recently. So he said, I am thinking about hurting people. I was on campus the other day looking for somebody to hurt with a gun. So we did get other resources involved in, in, um, as a result of that incident of, of our uh, assessment and, and going to meet the individual. Uh, there what they did secure a loaded handgun um, from his residence and he was arrested. So right now we're on, on route from uh, one of our community college campuses to another. We were just briefed at the previous campus that we were on that there was a student um, who recently made a threat. Although this individual did not pose a direct threat to the school in that moment, START is focused on student assessment and risk management. They must pay attention to people who are showing signs of concern, such as paranoia, speaking or acting out of character, aggression, not showering, or expressing suicidal thoughts. Because a lot of times what we notice in some of these shootings that happen um, nationally is that there are very early warning signs. We do get a lot of uh, referrals from professors, mainly because of how they're acting in class or statements they've made, but a lot of times we have behavioral intervention teams on each campus, which consists of student discipline, uh, mental health clinicians that are on campus, um, and also law enforcement officials on campus. Gotcha. The behavior intervention teams, also known as BIT, work closely with the START team. There was a student that had stopped coming to class, and we were talking about the possibility of a welfare check. As the BIT and START teams receive referrals. It's better off to report it than not report it at all, and let, let the professionals determine if it's actually a threat or not. They come together to create student threat profiles that include criminal records, academic backgrounds, and access to weapons. It's demanding but inspiring work that can change lives, sometimes in very personal ways that go beyond violence prevention. I have a very close family member who, who is mentally ill um, and under medication. She has been able to get uh, a bachelor's, master's, I mean, she's, she's doing things, right? And so I know that for students who are suffering from mental illness, if they have the support at home, if they have the support at school, if they have, um, if they can figure out that combination of medication that's gonna help them concentrate, it, mental illness is not a, a reason to not aspire to get an education. That shouldn't stop them. By the county expanding the program's resources and staff, the START team is able to assess and respond to cases more immediately and efficiently. We'll be able to serve every student who is in need 
uh, behind a, a, a threat, there's always dynamics. What is happening in the student's life that is causing them to think about violence as a remedy to their problem? In Monterey Park, I'm Rocky Theus. Employees from one county department spent a day volunteering on the streets of Skid Row to help individuals and families experiencing homelessness. A chance to better understand their plight and their needs. Walter James Frazier never takes kindness for granted. I love it. I love it. So people, some people, somebody cares. Somebody, you know, about, you know, when I came down here in 97, it's like another world. I've never seen nothing like this in my life. He's lived on the streets of Skid Row for the last 22 years. And today, right in his backyard, Frazier picked up some blankets, clothes, and other essentials at the annual L.A. County Department of Public Social Services Help the Homeless event. It's rough out here. It's rough. And so when someone lends a hand, helping hand? We really appreciate it. The event now in its fourth year brings together DPSS workers from all over the county for a full day of volunteering, providing basic essentials to the homeless individuals and families living near the Skid Row area in downtown Los Angeles. Being in our offices is fine, we service our clients, but being out on the street is where the heartbeat is, right? It's where you really connect with the people, where you really understand the struggles and frustrations, and I hope that they take that empathy back to the office. We're actually serving people who we don't otherwise have contact with. So, you know, in order to get services, you have to kind of want services and you have to come and get them. You either have to come to our office or another DPSS office. But in this case, we are dealing with people who are A, service resistant or for some other reason can't get to our offices and we're helping them with basic needs. This year, DPSS secured Amazon as a corporate sponsor to supply hygiene supplies. Other county departments like the Public Defender's Office and Public Health were also on hand to offer free services and vaccinations on site. This is quite the operation. Take a look, more than 300 volunteers over the course of three hours will hand out over 3,000 hygiene items, 1,300 meals, and more than 10,000 pounds of clothing that sitting right there to the individuals here on Skid Row. Any pants? You, you, you want some pants? It's really rewarding and you're not really thinking of um, what you're actually doing and that you're here standing by the heat because you know that it's going for a good cause and you're doing it for others. So I'm very happy to do it and happy to be part of this. A 19 year veteran of DPSS, Rochelle Cloyd has volunteered at this event for the last two years because homelessness is a crisis that touches every Angelino, no matter who or where you are. You cannot be not affected by this. Sometimes it's in our families, sometimes it's in our workplace and it's just taking over and we all need to step up and try to be a little more productive in the way that we try to solve it. This is like one of the, the best things that you can do is to give back to the community the just the, the feeling you get from it. There's nothing else like it. On Skid Row, I'm Jackie Karsh. To expand and intensify the fight against homelessness, the Board of Supervisors is investing $460 million in Measure H funds for the next year. We turn now to an inspiring story about our nation's heroes. Carry the Load is a countrywide relay that brings awareness to veterans and veterans' issues. During its stop in Los Angeles, we talked to some of the people who walked the three-mile stretch from Dodger Stadium to the Bob Hope Patriotic Hall about what it meant to them. <laughs> From real veterans <laughs> to those who support them, hundreds came out to participate in LA's Carry the Load Relay. It's a 4,100 mile relay going down the West Coast, which will actually converge on Memorial Day with the East Coast Relay for a huge celebration. It's like supporting your own family member by supporting those who are serving right now. Carry the Load also raises much needed funds to provide a continuum of care for military, veterans, first responders and their families and to nonprofit partners that provide healing services. Carry the Load was created to honor the sacrifices of our nation's heroes and also bring awareness of the true meaning of Memorial Day for our nation's veterans. So Memorial Day for me, is, it's a powerful day. Um, I don't think it's necessarily a day of sadness, but I think it's very important to remember the whole reason why you're here. It doesn't take a national tragedy 
for us to come together and be proud. We can come together and love this country equally because the stronger we are together, the more powerful we're going to be as a people. We Rise 2019 is a 10 day experience to foster awareness about mental health through art, music, discussions and workshops, all designed to elevate opportunities to live lives of meaning, purpose and well-being. We Rise 2019 is here and as the 10 day pop up experience opened, so did the conversation on mental well-being and living lives of purpose and engagement. It's going to take um, new thinking, big thinking, optimism. It's going to take creative approaches. And that's exactly what the Department of Mental Health has done. Through May 27th, We Rise is packed with programming. Musical performances, film screenings, panel discussions, workshops, art making, and this powerful art exhibit. Fabian Debora is one of the participating artists and the executive director of the Homeboy Art Academy. He says art is at the center of mental healing and it saved his life after growing up in LA with gangs and drugs and after attempting suicide. He wants visitors to feel a connection to his art, to feel seen and supported. If someone can stand in front of my work of art and relate and find themselves, then they know now that they are not alone. And I think that's what you will get from a lot of these works of art, the expression in itself and the projection and the vibrancy that allows for the audience to receive and to be heard and to be felt. The Department of Mental Health continues to provide services for Los Angeles County with events like this, We Rise, that reminds us that it's okay to say I'm not okay. We use this exhibit to inform and inspire all generations. Dr. Jonathan Sheeran, director of the Department of Mental Health, says the project aims to support people of all ages, but with a particular focus on the 14 to 24 age group, when the brain is still in development and most vulnerable to mental illness. We are busing in kids from child welfare with their families. We're busing in kids from the school districts across LA County. We're bringing in kids from probation. Uh, we are reaching far and wide to get as much um, engagement uh, around mental health. For example, 18-year-old Jacob Mutis, whose teacher introduced him to We Rise, has only been painting for one year and is already featured in the exhibit. Painting helps him express those emotions that he has trouble verbalizing. This piece is called The Colors of Ascension. It means about how you, you go up in life, how you change. When you go from sadness, from pain, you go from stress with anxiety to this beautiful, bright, self-acknowledging world, all through the process of help. At the end of the day, there are systems that bring us closer together, and there are systems that prevent us from finding meaningful purpose. We need to um, identify what those systems are, we need to understand what those challenges are, and then we need to um, work to undo them and to make sure that we can have the kind of community that we can um, build and engage and deepen our connections with ourselves, with our families, with our friends, with our communities, and with those systems that we put in place to take care of us. In downtown Los Angeles, I'm Rocky Theus. Need a pet project to stay busy? The Department of Animal Care and Control has hundreds of adorable pets ready for adoption and loving homes. My name is Tabitha and we're at the Downey Animal Care Center and this is Leonardo. He's a neutered five-year-old Alaska Malamute. He's social, playful, no sit and shake and would be perfect for an active family. And this is Yum Yum. She's a two-year-old Siamese. She's a laid-back kitty who loves to just lounge on the couch and she'd be perfect for all types of families. LA County's public hospitals have some of the best trauma care doctors in the world. If you have a minute, we'd like to introduce you to one of them. My name is Aaron Stromwasser. I'm Assistant Professor of Clinical Surgery here at LA County USC Medical Center. I'm a trauma surgeon intensivist and I run one of the four trauma services here at LA County USC. Uh, 
I'm Assistant Professor of Clinical Surgery here at LA County USC Medical Center. I'm uh, the Trauma Chief of Team B. I basically take any surgical emergency that comes in through the, the ER and determine whether the patient needs a severe operation to be performed and I take the patient to the operating room and provide continuity of care until they're discharged. The best thing about my job is when I take somebody who basically has seconds or minutes to live and I give them a lifetime. I take them to the operating room, I save their life and then telling them or their family afterwards that they're going to be okay. What inspires me is the possibility of um, adding as many years to someone's life as possible. That's why I became a doctor. For me, it was pure math. Trauma is the number one killer under the age of 40, and you add the most years to someone's life uh, by being a trauma surgeon. And I believe in the county mission. Thanks for joining us. We leave you now with the sounds of the call to the faithful at downtown LA's Cathedral of Our Lady of the Angels. We'll see you next time on LA County Close Up.